this is a special day. Christmas doesn't fall on Sunday often, but when it does, it's very, very special. I want you to open with me, please, to the Christmas story, Luke chapter 2. This story will be read in more places by more people in more nations today than we can imagine the Christmas story, Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And they were in the same country Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Beautiful Christmas story. Two Sundays, three Sundays ago, we thought about some people connected to the birth of Jesus, and we let them speak to us. Mary, the innkeeper, the shepherds, the wise men, and they each had a message for us. Last Sunday, we looked at the wonders of Christmas, the wonder of God's promise of the coming of a Savior, and the wonder of God's plan, how he brought it all to pass, and the wonder of God's purpose in the sending of his Son. 
Today, I want us for just a very few minutes to let the scriptures tell us why Jesus came. Who is this person, Jesus? Somebody a long time ago wrote these beautiful words. It's called One Solitary Life. Listen. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village where he worked as a carpenter's shop until he was 30 years old. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college. He never visited a big city more than 200 miles from where he was born. He did none of those things that we usually associate with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 years old when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies and went through a mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, the executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he owned. When he was dead, he was laid in a barred grave through the pity of a friend. But 19 centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as this one solitary life. And his name is Jesus. Who is this person whose birthday we celebrate today? He's the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's the day spring of the morning. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the rose of Sharon. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the bread of life and the light of the world. He is the vine, we are the branches. He is the door by which any man enters, he shall be saved. He is the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the master, the teacher. He is the Son of God. He is Christ. He is Lord. He is Jesus. He is the Christian's greatest friend, and he is the sinner's only hope. 
But why did Jesus come? The scriptures tell us, and sometimes in his own words, he tells us why he came from heaven to the earth, why he took upon him the form of a man and lived among us. Why did Jesus come? Well, the Bible says he came first to show us the Father. He came to let us see in person what God is like. John tells us in the first chapter of his gospel and verse 18, no man hath seen God at any time, but he came to reveal him to us. Jesus himself said, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And Paul said, he is the, in, the image of the invisible God. And in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus came to show us the Father. Jesus came to save us from our sins. In the 19th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, he said himself, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. He came to save us from our sins. And oh, what a salvation he brought to know that we can be forgiven, that we can have eternal life, that salvation is ours if we will receive it. A salvation that we can't earn. If we had a thousand lives to live, we could never earn it. A salvation that we can't buy if we don't have enough money to buy it. But a salvation that is ours as a gift. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. And as we celebrate Christmas today, what better way to do it than to thank the Lord for our salvation. Oh, what a blessed gift. What a blessed, blessed gift is the gift of salvation. And the Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Jesus came to save us. How sad it is that so many today will refuse his gift. Who will not accept his gift and will turn him away. But he said he came to seek and to save the lost. So he comes to knock on the door. And he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and live with him and he with me. Jesus is the Savior, and his name means Savior. Take the letters of the name of Jesus and let them speak to you, J-E-S-U-S. And let them mean Jesus eternally saves us sinners. J-E-S-U-S. -E he came to show us the Father. So we would know what God is like. He came to save us from our sins. 
to remove our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. How far is that? He came to bury our sins in the depths of the sea. He came to hide our sins behind his back. And listen, never remember them against you any more. He came to save us from our sins. But here's the third thing. Jesus came to give us abundant life. In the 10th chapter of John, in verse 10, he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Why did Jesus come? He came to give us abundant life. Life overflowing, life that flows on and on and on, ever and ever into that which is greater. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Some people think they really have life when they live by the standards of the world and throw their lives away in riotous living and bow to the wishes of Satan and forsake the goodness and mercy of God. No, that's not living. That's a living death. Jesus came to give us abundant life, life ever overflowing. Do you remember that day he met the Samaritan woman at the well and talked with her? He said to her, if you will accept the water that I give, it will be in you like a well of water springing up unto eternal life. One man said, if I knew that there was nothing beyond death, that when you die, it's all over. If I knew that there was no heaven or hell, I would still want to be a Christian in this life because the Christian life is the abundant life. You see, what people do not understand is this. Until they have Jesus, they do not understand what life is all about. And the only way life can ever be what God intended it to be is through Jesus Christ. No person can ever be what God wants men and women to be without him. He said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Aren't you glad and grateful to be a Christian? That on Christmas Day, we can sing joy to the world, the Lord has come. With meaning and purpose because Jesus has given us life more abundant. It's meaningful and it's purposeful and it's the real life. It's life as God intended life to be. He came to show us the Father. He came to save us from our sins. He came to give us abundant life. But listen to this. Jesus came 
to die on a cross. You see, the cross was not a surprise to Jesus. He knew when he was born in Bethlehem why he came. He came to die on a cross. That's why we can't celebrate Christmas without celebrating Calvary. That's why we never understand the manger until we see a cross overshadowing it. That's why we never understand the full meaning of his birth until we understand the meaning of his death. Listen to what he said. The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life as a ransom for many. Yes, there was a manger in Bethlehem, but there was a cross at Calvary. And there was an empty tomb after the cross. So if you want to tell the story of Jesus in pictures, you do it with a manger and a cross and an empty tomb. And all three of them go together. He came to show us the Father. He came to save us from our sins. He came to give us abundant life. And he came to die. But don't let the story of his dying stop there, for you have to add, he died for me. When Jesus came, he came with his face set steadfast toward Jerusalem. Knowing, oh yes, knowing that they would crucify him. He came to die, but also to be buried and on the third day to rise again as the eternal king of heaven and of earth, as Lord of all. Jesus Christ was born at Bethlehem. He died at Calvary, and he arose from the dead. Thank God that all of that is wrapped in the meaning of Christmas. But now if I told you all that and did not tell you what I'm fixing to tell you, I would not be the pastor that I should be. So come in close now and hear this. 
Jesus Christ came to show us the Father. He came to save us from our sins. He came to give us abundant life. He came to die and be buried and be raised again. But there's one more. Jesus came to invite us to go home with him. He said, in my father's house are many mansions, and if that were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That what, where I am, there you may be also. I'll tell you why Jesus came. He came to invite us to go home with him. So when life's little day is done, we will go to be with Jesus in the Father's house. That's his invitation. And that's why he came to Bethlehem. Merry Christmas. But remember what it means.